I followed difficult, I've had difficult following speakers before, but Grover and the Cookie Monster is the worst. Um, uh, and thank you, Jeff, and your great team. This is a fantastic event, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, people here might remember back in January having seen a tweet that looked a lot like this. And what I'm here to discuss with you today is just how we are going to uh, adapt ourselves to a very, very fast-moving uh, news culture. We used to talk about a 24-hour news cycle. Then, when things got faster and TV news was on all the time, it was more of an you know, hourly news cycle. But it's now getting to something like this 14,400 second news cycle, just instant stuff coming at us all the time. And qu just quickly, let's recall how we got here. Uh, the, the media changes over the time are pretty astounding. The uh, cave drawings, kind of a 0 0.1 media event. Uh, forgive me, I lived in Silicon Valley a long time and put version numbers on everything. So uh, the Gutenberg Bible, maybe a 1.0. Uh, huge event taking control from the priests of the Word of God, taking it out of their control. That's a fairly big deal and something like that going on now. The radio and TV, big, big events, creating a information flow in Claude Shannon's famous uh, diagram uh, of how media work kind of started off here and ended up there, start off with the information that got to people uh, in a kind of one-directional way with some things bubbling up, noise in the case of Claude Shannon. I changed a little for journalism uh, as disinformation and bad information. But fundamentally, this was how information worked in the last century. And it doesn't do that anymore. And the Twitter world and the 140 world and all the things we're working on are kind of a flow that is just fundamentally different. The consumers or creators the creators become collaborators, and I'm pretty excited by it because the flow has changed, and we can do so much more with it. The huge opportunities in all this, because there's a new abundance in the media ecosystem. I'm not one of the pessimists who's complaining about the demise of journalism. I think that's just basic bullshit. I think journalism is re being uh, reborn in lots of new ways and in lots of new places, and we're going to be much better off in the long run than they, we were in a mono monoculture of journalism that we had in the past. There are some issues, though, and that's what I'm here to visit with you about, that we should think about. There's so much of it, and so much of it is garbage, and so much of it is false, like the photoshopped images of this sort that became uh, part of our culture. Uh, other kinds of information changes uh, after Sarah Palin <laughs> made her strange remarks about Paul Revere's ride. Her fans tried to fix the Wikipedia page to make it like what she said. Uh, you know, this is kind of fun, but it's a problem, too. And then, of course, most recently in the last week, we have the case of the uh, blogger in Syria who wasn't what he, she, whatever said a major problem that we have to think our way through. Part of this is the challenge of news velocity. And I, I'm a big, huge user of Twitter. I love Twitter, and I love all the things we do. But we have to face the fact that the speed of the way the news comes at us and the way we send out what we know is causing issues that we have to work on. So uh, the, the things that are good about this are also creating issues that we're still working on. The BBC has some pretty good rules about how to deal with social media. But the BBC got fooled by the gay girl in uh, Damascus. They too were fooled. So what are we going to do about some of this? And especially what will we, the readers, the audience, not, never mind the journalists, do to figure out where we are? So. I'm going to suggest that we need to think about news, uh, even as we use this rapid fire uh, process, that we start thinking about a slow news process, thinking about things in a very different way. And it boils down to 
in a pretty key way, just taking a breath, not automatically reacting or assuming anything on first glance. There are lots of techniques and principles that we should think about in using and understanding and consuming, and the word using is more important than any other in this capacity. We can't be passive consumers of news anymore. We've got to be active users of the media that we do. And the first rule, the first principle is just be skeptical. Start out that way of absolutely everything. Start being skeptical. But that doesn't mean to be equally skeptical of everything. And this is a mistake that we sometimes make. Certainly our kids are equally skeptical of everything except what their friends say. And maybe they should be a little more skeptical of some of what their friends say. But the skepticism has to be ingrained and this judgment has to be ingrained too. And I have in my mind somewhere a kind of a credibility scale, a BS meter, uh, that I want you to notice that it doesn't start at zero. Uh, some random commenter on a, an anonymous blog would have to work really hard just to have no credibility start below zero and we may get this thing closer to being right. The other thing is that time from an event adds, it adds more information and more context. So the closer to the event that I see a tweet, the closer in time, the more skeptical I am of it. And the more I'm waiting to see what comes later. And I put a lot of the things that I see online into this category. It's interesting if true. I think that's a rule of thumb that would be good for all of us to adopt. Uh, I'm going to just tell you why I uh, put this up, because my new book is about a lot of this, and that's the end of my shameless self-promotion, and that's how people can reach me. And once again, I want to thank Jeff and the team for having me. This is a fabulous event, and thank all of you. Thank you.